to happen. That also became very apparent, however, that this was a lot of fake stuff, you know, with the sock puppets and all this other moronic talks about, you know, not having business plans and seeing great profitability in the future based on nothing. Right. So in October of 1999, in the Trends Journal, we predicted almost to the date the dot-com bust. Mm. Because what was happening is that most of this inflated expectations were, were being built around e-commerce, which was a new term again, you know, back in those days. And when we, we knew that once the Christmas numbers came in, that when they were tallied up, you would see for everyone that wanted to look into their balance sheets, that there was no e-commerce boom or no Christmas retail buying of any magnitude over the Internet. And that's when we knew it would all unravel. So, again, many of these things are quite predictable. They're the wild cards you can't see and, and some things you can't anticipate. But by and large, you, can see, you could have seen that one coming, and we did. And then, of course, 9-11 hit. The economy, what would be your description of the economy for, let's say, nine months after 9-11? Well, this is another one. In, 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 in uh, 2000, we predicted the recession because we knew that after the dot-com bust happened that this thing was, it was a downhill slide from there. We did not anticipate that they would give the country away by lowering interest rates to 46-year lows. So when the, air, the time that you're talking about, we were in a recession. And then they just started flooding the market with cheap money. Borrow on your home. Build that extra room. Go on that vacation. Spend money don't, that you don't have because you could borrow it cheaply. Ah, don't worry about paying it back, they told us. So that's how we were able also to predict the current crisis that we're in. That was the last car that they were able to play. And now the whole game has collapsed. Actually, it's a pyramid scam. Absolutely. What I think they did, from my viewpoint, is they took people that never had any business having any type of small wealth, gave them that wealth through credit, they went out and spent it, then they couldn't pay it back, and now we've got to print money to replace that money and you can see we have three up, three up days on the market everyone's celebrating but the reality is if the government hadn't stepped in all the major banks correct would be gone oh yeah and and here's the other part that's being left out by the media <laughs> you know they like to blame it on you know as we're talking about you know the, the the reality of what the individuals did but now let's look at the real group of criminals out there and the real leverage buyout scam artists. These are people that were buying, you know, twenty billion dollar companies with no money down, mm. you know, on the basis of future earnings. And that's when the real credit crisis hit back in two thousand and seven, when these guys couldn't pay back. They're blaming it all on the subprime problem. You know, the next shoe to fall is going to be the collapse of the commercial real estate sector, and it's going to dwarf what we're seeing in subprime. All these, these developments that have been built, all of these malls, all of these office buildings with virtually no money down, all of these hotels, on and on and on. You know, current events form future trends. Look at all the vacancies that you see all over the country in retail space. Who's going to rent these spaces? The answer is nobody. You saw all these businesses go out of business. You know, Bear Stearns, uh, uh, the, the Merrill Lynch mob, uh, the, you know, the Lehman boys, all these bond companies, the, you know, all of these, co these companies that either went under or downsized dramatically, they left behind, you know, millions of square feet of empty space. Who's going to rent this? Nobody. So this is where you're going to start seeing the collapse of 09 begin as these vacant spaces keep, you know, adding on more and more, and the developers and the speculators who uh, put these deals together can't pay their note. Well, absolutely, Gerald. Within 15 minutes of our office, we're here in Scottsdale, Arizona, 
there are maybe seven or eight different full-size Home Depots that were built during the peak. And during the peak, they were fairly busy. They weren't mobbed. But now you go inside, and they're empty. And I can just imagine what type of money it takes to keep one of those running. And someone going in to buy a couple of uh, flashlights isn't going to get the job done, and they're going to have to close them up. And when they close them up, like you said, it's going to have a tremendous effect on commercial real estate values. Well, do you see commercial, you see a lot of vacancies around where you are? Oh, absolutely. Well, <clears throat> you know, it's all over the country like that. Right. Oh, they overbuilt to a degree that's... Uh, well, that's why, we, uh, that's why we have to bail them out. It's as simple as that. You know, we don't have to bail them out. That's what they've put in our head. Because they, what the whole game is is that the elites make everybody feel that they're inferior. Okay. And I have news for them. They're not too big to fail. Just in case there's any doubt over there, I can speak with full authority that their mother's not better than mine. Absolutely. Well, I don't know if, if you ask Nancy Pelosi, I think she thinks that everything that she does is better than yours and mine. Well, I don't care about Nancy Pelosi just like I don't care about Laurel and Artie or Abbott and Costello. You know, who are these people too big to fail? They made up this line and the people swallow it? Who cares if they go under? Look where the money from AIG went. It went to Deutsche Bank. It went to J.P. Morgan. It went to, to, to Goldman Sachs. Who are these people kidding? They're not talking to a two-year-old. It offends me when they insult my intelligence or they think that they're better than I am. The concept of public service. Look, p politicians always got in office for the ego, for the money, for the power. But it has gotten so manipulative now that I don't know if anybody can really trust anything anymore. Well, again, you know, in, in staying with this thing about public service, what public service? You know, I worked, I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate when I was at a graduate school. I ran the mayoral campaign in Yonkers and was involved in Westchester politics. I know what it looks like. It was the worst job I ever had to watch grown men grovel. You know how you get to the top in politics? You suck your way up to the top. You know why these people take these jobs? Because they never have to work a day in their lives. They have a whole slew of slaves around them. The terminology they use these days are staffs and aides. They don't get their fingernails dirty. Can't the people see what's going on? Well, and absolutely. And once they're finished working uh, or uh, serving us, then they either become lobbyists to lobby against us, or they just go home and collect their retirement, which happens to be probably one of the best retirement plans I ever put on the face of the earth. And uh, then they can speak for, what, $100,000 a speech? That's right. Yeah, and to hear the same baloney that they've always spoke. It's amazing. It, it, it is. They, <laughs> they, they've got the racket. Let me ask you this, Gerald. Mark-to-market accounting. You hear about this a lot on the news. I've seen it on CNBC for the last month. People like Steve Forbes want to get rid of it, where the banks will be able to take these assets and basically put any number they want on them. Well, what's your opinion on that? Oh, well, why not? I mean, they make up other criminal games. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's Dodge City. They do whatever they want. They make up stuff. I mean, you know, it's just to keep the casinos going. Yeah. And they're going to do anything they can. And you see, this has become the real problem, by the way, is that when under the Clinton administration, under the tutelage of Robert Rubin, formerly of Goldman 